Good morning and welcome to a new session of European Open and Digital Language Week. I'm glad to have with me here Alfredo Soeiro, who is going to tell us more about the Quest project. And due to agenda reasons, we had to record some of the presentations from this session. So now I will play uh, the recording and then we will come back with a Mentimeter and some questions for you because we would like to know more your thoughts about the Quest project and about the session on e-learning competences for instructional designers and course courses with micro-credentials. So welcome to this new session of European Open and Digital Learning Week, which is organized by Eden. This time we are going to talk about e-learning competences for instructional designers and courses with micro-credentials. Well, the description of today's session is very basic that we are going to talk about the qualifying for the ultimate engaging smart training, which is a project co-founded by the Erasmus Plus program, a scope of key action two, and we have a variety of project partners, which includes ISQE from Portugal, IAD from Portugal too, University of Turku, Finland, Futuring Perspective Island, EFCOSER Foundation from Switzerland, and Eden DLE Estonia. The project has undertaken the task of developing the European Institutional Design and Professional Profile, the respective qualification and recognition of prior learning process for this profile, along with other relevant products. The webinar intends to present the outcomes of the project describing the e-learning instructional designer, competence framework in terms of knowledge, skills, and attitudes developing implementation. This professional profile is translated into a competence matrix for European qualification framework level six in terms of set of learning outcomes per competence unit. It is also planned to present the online courses created during the project and instructional design and learning program with respect to pedagogical structure, architecture, training methodology, and interactive training materials supported by an artificial intelligence tutor bot. Now, without further ado, I'm going to present you the speakers of today, Fredo Soeiro and Maria uh, Moreira. Now, a short introduction. Maria Moreira is a researcher and innovation project lead at ISQE Learning. She has a background of languages and public policy, and has been working in the EU co-funded projects since 2018. And of course, is the coordinator of our project of the Quest project. Alfredo Soeiro is Eden DLE Management Board member, academic director in the civil engineering of University of Porto and vice president of the department. He has previously been pro-rector of the University of Porto for continuing education, vice president of Aiken and president of EACEA. So we are glad that we are all here and please uh, Alfredo present us uh, all your insights about the Quest project. Thank you. So I'll start. Um, good morning. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, uh, not only in the Eden uh, Open Learning Week, but also to present this project. It's a, a, a project coordinated by ASQU, as you heard before. And um, our participation in Eden, from Eden is mostly on the dissemination and uh, promotion of the project. So uh, structuring a little bit the presentation that um, our moderator has done, um, we have uh, basically these four uh, main objectives, uh, the harmonization of the instructional designer profession, which I think is uh, something that probably doesn't exist. Um, on the other hand, to, 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 to have an implication on the mobility of um, the instructional designers, uh, they learn instructional designers, and uh, the other uh, end to increase the attractiveness of e-learning uh, a, on a diversified level uh, for all countries and for all users. Uh, this can be used uh, any any part of the world, um, although done in with a European context and uh, frameworks and 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 structure, it can be used anywhere. And on the other hand, for a more uh, let's say um, uh, I would I would call it a professional uh, perspective to qualify the professionals in this area. You know, that anyone, that I think it's a big problem in the learning area, is that anyone says that they can teach online. 
and, and it's not true. Uh, so some are prepared, some are not. And this um, uh, framework may help you uh, or may help anyone that it's interested in verifying uh, the competencies of those that are teaching online if they fit um, an agreed uh, framework that it, like it was done on this project. So these are the partners. You see the geography of the partnership. Um, it's a two-year project. It will end uh, uh, next 1st of November. It doesn't have much money. So I would say that uh, most of the results are product of extra efforts from the partners. Um, and uh, like I mentioned, the four results are, uh, let's say, uh, stated here. Um, we have um, a website that um, you can um, uh, consult with the latest developments. There's a Facebook and a LinkedIn presence. So we, we have the responsibilities of these uh, four main results. You can also contact them if you have questions. And um, talking about the European Instructional Designer uh, Competence Framework, um, it considers, in fact, the, 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 the actions and uh, tasks of instructional designers in terms of uh, designing, developing, and delivering. Um, the materials in this course, and we'll have our partner and coordinator, Maria Moreira, talking about uh, the materials and how the courses were organized and uh, designed and planned and evaluated. There is a piloting uh, actions uh, from all from from partners uh, to validate and tune up the, the these uh, materials. And of course, we want to 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 propose um, competencies uh, in a framework that uh, will help to define at the level six of the European qualification framework. So we're talking about bachelor, not the specialization or a technician levels, which would be respectively seven and uh, five of the European qualifications framework, but at the level six. Um, so it will allow them to teach at, in most higher education uh, institutions and levels. Okay, so we, we tackle, like I mentioned, uh, the analysis, design, development, implementation, and evaluation of uh, the courses. Um, and um, the, just a quick reminder of the competences in the European qualification framework definition in terms of knowledge, skills, responsibility, and autonomy. Personally, I prefer for responsibility and autonomy attitudes. Uh, but um, it is what it is. It is what is defined in the EQF, and we'll deal with that. So here you have a description of the knowledge that is expected for e-learning instructional designers in terms of their um, uh, knowledge. So there is some content, what generally is introduced into curriculum, um, and we have the skills, which is the capacity to 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 apply the knowledge acquired. Uh, and um, you have to have certain skills, certain competences that will allow you to innovate, for instance, and to um, uh, solve complex uh, issues. And then the attitudes, because you can have knowledge and skills, but if you don't have the right attitude, probably, um, the knowledge and skills will not help uh, the instructional design. And um, here there is something that it's very important, which is uh, being capable of uh, managing professional development of individuals and groups. In fact, uh, if you have a degree or a title, if you don't have um, uh, professional development, uh, the so-called CPD or lifelong learning, it's not enough. You you need to keep learning, and the the instructional designers in this competence framework have to have this type of attitude to to promote lifelong learning. Um, the so the, the in a in a presentation of the of the required um, competences for instructional designers in this contest of this project, you have here capacity 
to 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 problem solve practical skills that are uh, centered on human human on persons uh, it's something that sometimes uh, uh, designers forget we are not dealing with numbers we are dealing with persons each one with their learning styles with their personalities and habits and um, of course uh, you have to have um, knowledge and skills in the area of the ICT or IT or uh, digital um, areas. And of course, um, uh, there is here some demands in terms of um, the social uh, and the personal uh, communication skills to be able uh, to uh, deal with um, different uh, perspectives of the world, different cultures, uh, openness, inclusion, citizenship, etc. Those are uh, the competences that are uh, tentatively described in the Quest competence framework. Now, Maria is going to talk about this, but I just just to give you an idea, there are several e-learning modules um, that deal with these subjects, um, and uh, they are. Uh, considered to be used separately. Uh, so you can take uh, number one and number five or number three and six, depending on your self-assessment of needs in terms of training. And, and then you, 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 you can complete your professional profile in terms of um, uh, instructional design. So, um, <clears throat> Here's an example of the description of uh, the first unit uh, that encompasses, for instance, for the knowledge, uh, instructional design theory, instructional situation analysis, instructional solutions, examples, etc. And then for the skills, acknowledge, um, uh, let's say, how you can use an iterative uh, instructional design procedure and process to to achieve your 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 uh, your skills in this area, um, being capable on uh, defining theories of learning and instructional design to to adapt to the different uh, uh, situations, and of course, like I mentioned, the behavior and attitudes, like awareness of the um, because this question of attitudes is mostly. Um, uh, uh, concerned by the others. Yeah, of course, you still have to have your own initiatives to innovate, etc. But uh, the impo important point is to take into account the diversity of people you will be finding, because one model doesn't fit all. I mean, it, it's a very big mistake of instruction and education and training is that one one size fits all, and that's not true. So that's one of the uh, expected competence in terms of uh, attitudes in module one, um, and uh, like I said, Maria is going to 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 talk about this. So I'll probably skip this part and leave the main contents for Maria. She's more capable than me. She's running the modules. So um, uh, these are, let's say, in a in a, in a very uh, general way, we we, we expect. Uh, the workload for the training of about 200 hours of self-work, not contact, but uh, contact hours, but uh, general uh, dedication to, to the project. <clears throat> there is an assessment, there is practical and theoretical, um, which uh, the, the first one is direct, the second one practical assessment is indirect, but in any case, it's a way of trying to 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 uh, to evaluate uh, in practical terms the competencies you have. And of course, uh, for those who, who want to have a um, uh, certain way of uh, verifying if uh, they have enough competencies, this is a proposal. This is not from my point of view. Maria will talk about that. She's the one that is expert. But this is not written in stone, so this can be adapted to the uh, local and national and institutional conditions and what is necessary to have approval. So, thank you. That is my part. And I will leave uh, for my colleagues to continue.
Thank you for your attention. Perfect. Thank you very much, Alfredo, for your presentation. And now it's time for Maria to present us how are the course like? How are the methodologies and what is exactly the structure of the Quest courses? So please, Maria, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Alfredo, for your uh, presentation also, which I think um, is the, the perfect uh, introduction to this next part. Um, let me also share my screen. Okay, let me know if it's all working out. Yeah. So uh, the project result two, which is the e-learning course, European Instructional Design Expert e-learning course, uh, directly feeds from project result one and the whole project context, meaning um, that it was based on these uh, skills, competences, uh, the whole uh, learning outcomes and competence units that the partners have worked to build the e-learning course. Um, I can, so as an introduction, this is the target groups, the main target groups that were intended to, that this course um, interests to, but I believe that anyone who wishes to know more about instructional design or about any of the competence units included in the project have um, here a great opportunity to introduce themselves to the topic, to get some references, um, some bases, and then uh, move on from there. So the target groups would be teachers and trainers, education and training technicians, staff that supports the development of digital learning experience in vocational educational training, higher education and corporate looking for upskilling, and also professionals with a background in communication, educational sciences and design wishing to reskill. Um, as Alfredo mentioned, uh, not everyone who has access to an e-learning course uh, material is then suddenly a teacher or an educator. So it is important to have some skills and knowledge on pedagogy, on methodologies that will support the learners in having the correct understanding of what it's being of what's being studied. So um, at first, the methodology of the course, uh, I have built a training scheme, which seems a bit complex and confusing, but it, we will quickly understand that it's mostly a guide for the structure of the course. So we have the seven competence units. Uh, let me see if I can find the pointer. Um, okay, no worries. So we do have the seven competence units, uh, which were stated previously by Alfredo and we have materials within each competence unit. So based on the content of each unit, which was developed by partners. Um, then we have the synchronous components, which are three online or face-to-face -face sessions complemented by the submission of some of the materials. And also uh, comprehending the whole, um, the whole, um, material of the course, it's an interactive global diagram and the AI tutor bot, which is um, a sh an intelligent chatbot, which will guide the user throughout the course and the materials and also provide some external references or redirect the user for some um, external research on a topic that the, the learner wishes to know more about that maybe um, it's not included in the course. Um, okay, so these are the three sessions. And so about the synchronous sessions, they can be online or face-to-face, -face, though I think it's recommended, if possible, that they happen face-to-face -face if the users are uh, completing this course in any institution or organization that allows this. Other than that, obviously that nowadays um, 
any many options are available so having an online uh, session is also uh, okay uh, the important is that it's synchronous and that the learners and the, tr the trainers can interact share some knowledge share some doubts clarify any questions the sessions should be of around two hours but this is obviously a recommendation so it's um, very flexible and adaptable to whatever best fits the, the training in question. The first session should happen at the beginning of the course. So it should be meant for users to get to know the platform they are working on, which can be any platform because the materials are developed in SCORM uh, format, um, which can be implemented into any learning management system. So any platform um, will ac accept these materials. Um, the training methodology, so which will be the steps to their training, which will be uh, the required uh, learning objectives, um, the assessment criteria, so how everything will go on, what are their expectations, and what they should be prepared for. Then an intermediate session, which should be, um, we recommend that it happens after completing Competence Unit 3, at the beginning of Competence Unit 4, which is meant to support the trainees, monitor progress, uh, clarify any questions regarding the assessment or the practical activities that sh they should be developing. And then a final session after completing um, Competence Unit 7, which is the last one, and it is meant to clarify any final doubts or um, to hold any discussions that the learners wish to, to be more profound on, and also for submitting the practical exercises and closing the assessment process. So again, back to our scheme, we will now talk a little bit about the asynchronous component, so the online component. Um, the course can be made 100% online. So as I said, it is recommended that the sessions are face-to-face, um, -face, but they can happen online. So we can have a group of learners from um, many countries, many continents, if we will, um, or also just one single person who wishes to do the course and the trainer is across the globe. This is all, um, perfectly okay and also for me I think a way to open access to all these materials and all these universities and organizations institutions who have expertise on the topic and wish to share it with no geographical limitations or barriers uh, there is a theoretical component and also a theoretical assessment the delivery format is, as I mentioned, uh, SCORM packages. And also there is the existence of a forum, which can be held either, it's, this is also very flexible, so either on the institution's website or on any social media page that allows the creation of a group, a forum. And um, this is very important for the self-study, the next um, topic, because it will be the, um, a method of support, a means of support for the learners to engage with one another, with someone who has already completed the course maybe, or to clarify any questions for someone who is still in the very beginning and wishes to align expectations with what will happen. So the trainer obviously will be present in the forum to provide support and clarify directly any questions. So this can be for discussions outside of the synchronous sessions and then each trainer can adapt and um, be flexible on how to run this forum and also on the self-study there are the formative exercises and all um, activities that will be compiled in the portfolio at the end of the course if the person wishes to go through all the units then on the training materials. So each competence unit features responsive interactive screens. So responsive um, means that they can be um, accessed by a computer, a phone, a tablet, iPad, any uh, technological material access to the internet. 
uh, interactive booklet, which is um, within the, the interactive screen, so it's implemented on the end of each unit, also with a PDF version available to download. So if the user wishes to go through the unit and then download the PDF to keep the extensive version of the materials of the content, they can do it. They don't need to keep having access to the internet for that. One video from an expert for each competence unit, so a short video which will usually serve as either a clarification of a specific topic or um, a conclusion to the competence unit. Some pedagogical activities, which will be two practical exercises per competence unit. And then the artificial intelligence tutor bot, which is implemented on the course and also on the project website, and I can show you in a few moments. Um, this is, again, the schemes, just to understand the separation between the theoretical components, so the interactive screens, booklets, and expert videos, the practical training, which is the self-study and the formative exercises, and then the assessment, which will get there in a few moments. Um, now let's talk about the AI tutor bot and these components plus the website, which are available. It is important that the users go through the interactive map before they enter the course, because this will be the tool that will provide them with the um, relationship between each competence unit and where they stand on the road on, of their um, of their training. So now I have here to show you as a review tool. Um, this is the English version. All materials are available in English, Portuguese, and Finnish. And then here you can click on any of the circles of each competence unit and see how they relate to the unit before. So how their topics are somehow related. So even though the users can choose to access only, um, to go through only some of the competence units, it's important to understand that these topics are as a web of knowledge, they are all interconnected, they have a relation to each other. So it is interesting to know maybe uh, when a user goes, goes through unit number one, they can maybe check how does this relate to unit four. So if they are interested in any, specifically in any of these topics, they can go directly to unit four if they please, or um, maybe skip some units if they are interested in some very specific um, content or just overall to get an idea of how it all relates together. And continuing with our presentation, we now see some examples for competence unit seven. So first for theoretical components, the interactive screens are different types of screens which will include text, images, interactions, animations. They are meant to be uh, interactive for the user, so not to be read as a textbook that you scroll by, but really as um, a course that will allow you to have a better idea of how the contents relate, which are the most important topics. And as I've mentioned before, they are all responsive. The booklets one per CU are the interactive PDFs with the contents of each unit of competency. They have the downloadable version available and they also have some pop-ups. So some content that you can click on to have a clarification of what it is or some um, subtitling, some captions of, of graphics or images. So overall, some extra information, the expert video that I already mentioned, and the artificial intelligence tutor bot. So this is a screenshot of what the course looks like, but I will also show you an example. So this is an, for competence unit seven, just as an example, you can click start. 
I'll just mute it. And then you have an introduction of the competence unit structure with the topics that will be covered in this unit and the main learning outcomes that you should be able to achieve by the end of this unit. You move on to the content. You have some external links that you can access. You have uh, some graphics with some very um, direct information, so it is not too heavy. It is clear on what's meant to to be um, the knowledge is meant to be gathered by the user. And then all these following units are blocked, so um, the user should go through the whole um, entirety of contents in order to access the following topics. This is mostly to avoid confusion or to avoid any information that has been um, introduced before and then if the user goes by the topic and doesn't read it, it will be maybe a little confusing. So they should go through the whole unit. And then I'll move this along just to get to the final um, so some interactions here with the main topics some external links still some references then on the conclusion you have the expert video uh, for an expert that will clarify any of the topics so i'll take the sound from here just so it it's not very messy. Um, and then the, con the videos are translated into the languages of the project. So if you are exiting the course uh, in English, the video will be subtitled in English and the same for Finnish or Portuguese. When arriving at the end of the project, you of the unit, I'm sorry, you can directly access the interactive booklet or download the PDF version. And then here for the booklet, you can mute it. move on to the pages. You can uh, see the, that the index is the same as the course because it really is a more extensive uh, version of the content. And you can keep this as a support material to um, to access anytime you have any questions or any doubts. So um, this is the booklet. Then also, I can show you uh, the chatbot. which I will show you on the website. So when you access the course and you have access, I'll put this a bit larger, to this little chatbot here, I'm going to mute him also, and he will ask you which unit do you want to know more about. So imagine I want to go to learning methodology And he will give you um, just an introduction to what this means and you tell him, yes, I want to know more or go back to main menu to see the other topics. And it will allow you to explore each of the topics uh, of the competence unit. And then when you get to a point where you um, kind of end the, the the content that on this topic or um, you can opt for, sorry, I'm trying to keep up with him. <laughs> uh, he will still give you topics uh, as long as they are covered on the course. And then when they are, when they are not anymore, because this is uh, an introduction, you can either search on the web or ask um, chat GPT with the disclaimer that you are now entering a different uh, realm, <laughs> no longer under our control. So the information provided might not be accurate. Or you can also uh, just search for the content that you wish to know more. So um, let me go for LMS. 
and he will look within all units um, oh, about um, so maybe the topic is something different, but he will look through all units to know about the concept that you are trying to find out for. Um, okay. Next on, on our scheme, we have these practical exercises. So practical exercises are important to have the learner, the trainee, um, self-assess whether they are comfortable on this um, knowledge or not. So they will have some formative exercises in which they are given um, case studies or a test description, and they should develop the project that is um, stated here. It has an estimated time of how long the test will take. This is obviously just a recommendation and the trainee will have as much time as the trainer states to to perform this task. Um, some suggestion of sources, some uh, description of how to deliver the task. So in this case, the trainee should make a presentation um, explaining these topics. Um, they can, in here it is stated that for contact information, they should go for the trainer or the training coordinator, but it is also possible to add any specific contacts for um, experts that can help on this topic. And then some evaluation tips for the trainer. So if the trainer wishes to be inspired by some tips or is not too sure on how to evaluate this task, there are some ideas presented here. And each competence unit will present two training exercises. Um, this is on the introducing the evaluation component. So each unit has these exercises and a multiple choice test, um, which has three options with a single, single correct answer. Uh, each test per unit has a pool of 20 questions from which 10 are randomly selected for each attempt. So if you go through the test um, more than once, you will most likely not find the same questions. You have three attempts and 40 minutes to complete the test, and it only allows you to move forward if you have a 60% success rate. So bear in mind that this is just for specific tests for each unit, and that the overall evaluation of the course is a ponderation with the activities and the project assignments and the, um, everything that you submit to your trainer in the portfolio. And I also have um, multiple choice tests to show you. So you can choose the language that you wish to work on. Let's go for English. And then you have the same instructions that I've stated just now. And, oh, sorry, wrong link, and this is Finnish. But um, this is for Finnish, but you can choose the answer and it will just state at the end um, of, the, of the quiz, how many questions did you have right? So let's not go through all of them now, but this is to give you an idea of the appearance of it. So reaching the end, the exercise will tell you whether you reach the 60% success rate or not, and ask if you wish to try again or to um, leave and go through the course once again. And then the 360 tasks, which are, again, some case studies, some project assignments, but these have a very, um, a bit of a different introduction on the course because they mean to take into account as many learning objectives as possible. So um, these project assignments are made to be developed by those who want to go through the entire course and not just some units so that they can um, kind of include the knowledge from all units in one activity. So there are four uh, possible activities. The trainee must can choose one of these tasks to develop, or they can do more if they wish to um, have some more self-study. Um, and then based on a document with instructions, they will have a um, task that will include, it will be a bit longer to, to develop. So instead of the 
four hours estimated in the previous practical activities. Here it can be one week, two weeks, three weeks of work, which is why we estimate the 200 hours of workload, um, because this type of activities, obviously it's recommended that the students um, do the four of them in the ideal um, scenario, so they can train a bit more and develop some more, their skills a little more. Um, and they will need to have um, knowledge from all the competence units mixed together, so connected um, in order to be successful in this. And then also we provide a grid with some correction criteria for the trainers um, based on each of the, um, of the activities. So it's mostly based on uh, also the topics that Alfredo mentioned of the scientific empirical knowledge, design skills, ICT knowledge, um, any cognitive civic skills. And then uh, finally, the portfolio. The portfolio are uh, portfolio typically are these um, online rep repositories where all the tasks carried out during the course are archived or compiled. So um, the trainees should take all the activities that they have developed, all the multiple choice quizzes, any results, any self study, any further investigation, and submit it to the trainer at the end of the course. And then the trainer will have access to a grid for evaluating the portfolio, obviously um, flexible to be adapted according to each trainee group or to each trainer uh, style or objective of the course. And this will be the basis for the assessment of the students. So um, it is not just based on the grades of one activity or one project, it is based on um, the entirety of the work developed by the trainee um which will lead to the final grade and the awarding the certification of these um european instructional design experts and this is it on my end on course structure uh we are available for any future doubts or questions that you wish to to clarify you can send me an email or to any of the partners and we will happily um clarify or share any um materials with you. Thank you so much. Okay, so thank you very much, Maria, for your presentation. I think that we have now a, a better view of what is actually Quest and how the courses have been developed and what are the possibilities of this of this project. In that regard, I would like to ask you, how do you see the potential of, of Quest and these courses uh, in terms of implementation? But also, as we have seen already with the chatbot, there's also the feature of AI. So how all this together do you see um, Quest in, as I mentioned, in terms of implementation? Uh, thank you for the question. Well, I think Quest in terms of implementation is very valuable because for once, because it is open access and um, this is the basis for work for any future organization or institution or educational uh, institution that wishes to provide um, any recognition of knowledge on this. So I do think that instructional design, specifically in Portugal, which is my country, so it's kind of the reality that I'm closer to, um, there are many instructional designers who were never really recognized as such. So they work as instructional designers. They they are wonderful instructional designers. They have a very high quality work, but there is no course on this. There is no um, bachelor on instructional design. There is nothing. So um, hopefully Quest will serve as a introduction to this. Obviously it's not um, a three year bachelor or it's not meant to be this type of um, this type of resource, but it surely is um, a starting point in um, for any institution to be able to easily implement um, the topic and go through this um, certification in the future. Perfect. Alfredo, how, how do you see it? What's your view on it? Well, my view is uh, mainly the fact that we now have some terms of reference 
to know what is an instructional designer. So we, we know what uh, are the uh, proposal for competences for this activity. So it can somehow organize the type of uh, e-learning um, uh, population in terms of providers. I mean, you, you, you know that you have these terms of reference and you can check your own competences with the ones that are proposed and maybe take uh, one or two or three uh, modules to complete your training. But it's um, a step for the improvement of quality of provision of e-learning. Because, uh, like I said, anyone that has a computer and a learning management platform uh, says that they are uh, in, uh, pro instructional designers and providers of e-learning. And that has, needs some uh, quality assurance. So that's what I think this is the best. And Alfredo, you also mentioned during your presentation terms such as diversity and attitude. How important are such concepts in order to create an e-learning course for any user or learner? I, I think it's connected with this idea of the open and distance learning. If it is open, it has to be to anyone. So we have to consider that there are people with less digital competences, uh, with different uh, languages, with different um, uh, attitudes towards uh, learning. Uh, some like to study at night, some like to study um, for short periods, some for longer periods. And I think this uh, list of competences for those who provide this type of open learning and uh, are, are important to, uh, let's say, uh, complement and enrich their potentials in terms of providing um, good types of e-learning. Perfect. So thank you very much. And we are back with another presentation, this time from Didier LeBlanc, who is the founder and director of B-Assist, leading audit director and certification management software. He's an international expert in several ISO, internalization projects, and is the president of ECOCERT, European Foundation for Competence Certification from Switzerland. So now I will share with you the presentation that Didier kindly prepared for us. Hello, welcome. I'm Didier Blanc from EFCOSERT Foundation in Switzerland. EFCOSERT in the Quest project is the partner who was in charge of all the aspects dedicated to education, the course learning outcome and the successive uh, competencies and the objective of this presentation is to uh, explain you how these different education levels can uh, are uh, configured. The, everything starts from the competence and good practices profile that we drafted together within the project consortium. Um, the, this profile is structured according to the course structure, which is aligned with the ADI analysis by development implementation uh, evaluation uh, process or, or, or method. And then we have an additional chapter on project management. I will not read all these competencies here. You can do it by yourself uh, if you download the presentation afterwards. But it is important for you to know that uh, all the competencies that are listed here are also the, the basic structure uh, questionnaire. Um, people who can assess the competencies you demonstrate, uh, your activities, uh, will have to check whether they are demonstrated or not. So this is the starting point. How did we reach this competence profile? Uh, we had different sources. Experts um, we had in the project, literature, external experts, pilots. These are all sources. We processed, we have it, an iterative process with uh, successive loops, starting with a uh, workshop within the, the project, uh, brainstorming at the beginning and launch of a project and then um, cross-matching the pedagogical objectives and learning outcomes and how far they are relevant and, uh, and uh, representative. Some 
good practices that are supposed or expected to be applied and uh, such approaches people who either external or piloting that raised um, alongside the project development. So this completes this good practices profile is, if you look at this slide here, is the, 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 the common starting point, for what we call two, leg, two legs approach, um, which are basically the two levels of certification that we addressed in the project. On the left, you have the classical knowledge acquisition. Uh, you have some course material, you uh, apply for the, for the training, and then you have a test at the end of the training, uh, testing your acquired knowledge. And okay, if it is okay, you can get, I know that your micro credential means you know something. And this can be automatically granted by the learning management system that operates. Uh, the competence profile is uh, a basic source for that, whereby everything shall be consistent, uh, meaning starting with the learning outcome and pedagogical objectives, and then the course material, which is uh, which enables to reach these objectives. So this is the classical approach. If you look at the pyramid down there, the Millet's pyramid, um, basically you mainly used uh, in, the, in the health sector, uh, but very, very characteristic of the scale approach that you have in, uh, in, in uh, progressing. Uh, you first know something when you attended a training, for instance, or get a and uh, at the end of the pyramid, at the top of the pyramid, you then do and you perform in practice. You do. And this is the dimension which is going to be addressed by the, 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 the right pillar or leg of the uh, slide and scheme and of the approach that we develop within uh, our certification approach, um, Erasmus Plus project. Um, so, the same competence and good practices profile will then lead to what we call the recognition use cases. Uh, we will come back to that. Uh, it is, okay, who is able, oh, he, here it is about demonstrating, about doing, is about practicing. Uh, who can recognize you are competent? In the case of an uh, instructional designer, um, developing uh, e-learning courses, expect trainees attending a course developed by the, 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 the instructional designer can uh, about uh, application and demonstration of a certain number of good practices. You can expect peers, you can expect a client or a sponsor or whatever. Uh, so these are the use cases. And these people all together, this is what we call the ecosystem. We'll show you how we drafted and, and uh, assembled the ecosystem. Um, then this leads to the questionnaire we already had a look at, and then the candidate, the, in our case, the instructional designer, wanted, wanting, aiming to get certified, to get recognized as competent. He will activate his access, asking people, trainees, peers, whatever, uh, hey, please, uh, can you uh, confirm? Uh, can you go through this questionnaire and pick the competencies that you feel I demonstrated? And uh, this is then something that can lead to another badge, which is another level, which is the I am able. Here you have the I know, at the bottom and starting point of the pyramid. Here you are at the top. This is basically the approach. The definitions maybe are useful for understanding that and the difference between these two pillars. Knowledge is what you assimilate regarding in, uh, information through learning. And then competence is your ability to apply this knowledge. Uh, the knowledge you assimilate. It. Are you able to apply this to achieve results? And this is typically a uh, level here. Form in practice, which means 
Okay, you cannot sense a completeness just by uh, multiple joint behind the force. Uh, you have to observe that on the job. And uh, this is the tricky part. It has also to be flexible, to be accessible and open, and also it has also to, to be uh, potentially maintained over the time. You continuously demonstrate that you apply and maintain your competence. So this is the, the tricky part that we address typically in such projects. And this is our specific expertise within F courses. So the key question is, okay, Knowledge is easy, is classical. Uh, we know how it works within uh, any kind of training, uh, short term, long term, uh, education, uh, long courses. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, and who can, when it is about applying and demonstrating, you are able, uh, who can recognize it? the most classical and first approach you think about are experts or examiners. Uh, Right, they are in a situation in a sector, but they are not always there. They are not always available. They are, uh, they have a cost. Uh, if you if you want to 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 hire them or, or to employ them, so, uh, and this is this is not really flexible. Uh, and what we built our our uh, approach and what makes it unique is that okay we 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 switched or turned the question the other way around uh, and thought so oh, who else can assess and uh, confirm demonstrate uh, typically clients, beneficiaries, peers, trainees in our case, employer. Anyway, they can also contribute. And if you if you if you think having one or two single experts or examiners or 20 trainees uh, confirming uh, and assessing along the same profile the most uh, reliable not sure that the trainees system and, uh, and pool is less reliable, probably uh, at least comparable. So this is what we call the competence recognition. And this allows to reduce costs, to enhance accessibility, and to also be used in maintenance uh, demonstration. Specifically, in the case of the instructional designer related to, to, to this course, we drafted the system for the I am able level. Uh, the following way around. We said, okay, 10 trainees, two clients or sponsors. Clients is if you are developing uh, as a private company, uh, developing training courses for external clients companies, groups pay you for developing that, so you have a client, but if you are in a, in a university or in an educational institution, uh, your client is a head of department uh, or whatever, who orders you or who allows you to develop some course and okay, they, they can also be part of the recognition. Yes, of course. Uh, reference principal in the school, if any. Uh, uh, okay, this is it for the initial or aggressive use application and for maintenance to think about, okay, let's say we deliver a certificate valid for five years, but provided that every second year you uh, have five trainees confirming that you still apply uh, and still demonstrate that you achieve the intended result. So oh, this is something also dynamic, and uh, this is the, uh, also a big difference between um, competence certification and a diploma. So in a diploma, you, you get it once in your life, and then whether you practice or not, you get it. Uh, so this is a, a big difference. So once, once the competence recognition ecosystem delivered the evidence, uh, 
the certification body can check whether the sufficient number of each category within the ecosystem delivered uh, some testimonial and whether the person who delivered that are legitimate to do it. Uh, if it is only your grandmother and, and your football team, uh, probably this is, this is not acceptable or not enough. Um, and this is the, the difference. So the INO level match will be automatically delivered by the uh, choice. Uh, at, um, if you meet the pass mark at the end of the training and the I am able or I practice badge, yes, involving the ecosystem. It is the main difference, and these are the two levels of certification that we developed within this uh, project. If you want to learn more or uh, deepen our uh, notions and, uh, and um, about the uh, competence certification, we have, if you click on either this link or this one, we have some resources on our website. Uh, which are leading to a micro credential, uh, sorry, or learning course, uh, about 45 minutes, um, very interactive and pedagogically important, um, about competition that can help you deepening your, your notions and uh, understanding. And we also have a recorded um, video, which is at least two times as long as this one, which also helps basically dissolve it. Has been delivered. Thank you for attention, this is it. Uh, if you have any question, uh, you have here my contact details, and uh, also if you have any project ideas for uh, next uh, Erasmus Plus projects, um, involve including potentially uh, competence certification, I'm happy to. Fantastic. Thank you very much to our speakers and presenters, Alfredo Soeiro. Uh, Maria Moreira and Didier Blanc. Now it's time to know more about your opinion on these materials that we have just seen on the curriculum, courses, and micro credentials and open batches. What is the approach that the Quest project has on these uh, concepts? First of all, we're going to open a Mentimeter questionnaire, a poll quiz. And first, we would like to know what's your take on the curriculum. These are five questions that you can grade from poor, mediocre, sufficient, and good. Then these wrestles will be discussed with Alfredo Suero, who is present here, and we will learn more about what's the conclusions to that those wrestles. And then we will move forward and learn also what's your view on the presentation of DDS concerning micro credentials and open badges. So right now I'm going to share my screen and show you the QR code and the Mentimeter code to answer this question. So here we are. This is the first part as mentioned. This is the curriculum. And please join Mentimeter using this QR code via your phone, or you can also access via menti.com in entering the code 41661306. And now it's time for the first question. Do you think competence framework reflects the profession of EED? You can place now your uh, answers and we will surely reflect on them. We will wait just a few more seconds just to see if there's more answers. Perfect. And now we can move to the next question. Do you think competence framework length is adequate? Perfect. So we move on. And do you think curriculum models number is usable? Perfect. 
perfect. We move on to the next one. Do materials available in curriculum provide proper pedagogy? Remember that you can check the curriculum document on the chat. It's placed there the link to the full document on the Quest website. Perfect. And next one, are these assessment methods proper for the course profile? Perfect. So these are the questions for the first part of the Mentimeter. And now I would like uh, Alfredo to tell us what are your thoughts on these results? Well, um, I think you were all very nice. So <laughs> thank you for answering those that have answered. But uh, um, I think the number uh, 12 out of uh, 50 is probably not enough to 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 get a, a nice picture, and you probably didn't have time to to analyze um, the the presentations. It was all very quick. So what I'll say is that um, no one has said poor. So thank you, and uh, let's go for the next part. I think uh, if anyone wants to say something at the end, we will open uh, the mic. But. Uh, uh, those are my immediate um, uh, conclusions. Perfect. So we move on to the next part of the questionnaire, which is on micro-credentials and open badges. Again, you can scan this QR code or clickmenticom.com and use the code 4166-1306. And the first question is, are the certificates proposed recognized by stakeholders? Perfect. Here we have more diversity of views. And we are going to move on to the next one. Do certificates diploma contain relevant information of achievements? Perfect. And now, certificates, diplomas, allow mobility of EED professionals. Perfect. So we continue teaching companies, organizations will use the certificates, diplomas, micro credentials. What do you think?
and certificates, diplomas, micro credentials have a value for EED professionals? Perfect. So these are the results from the uh, Mentimeter. Now I will share again the, the final ones so that we can have a look at them. Perfect. Alfredo, how, how do you see it? Um, again, nobody said poor. So at least we have usable uh, materials. Uh, there are some mediocres. There are a lot of answers on the chat. So we have to process them later, but in any case, uh, we have something. And um, from my point of view, um, uh, as long as we have something is better than having nothing. So what these answers also tell me is that uh, uh, we need some improvement uh, from, I think from sufficient and mediocre to good. And, um, but we have, a uh, basis uh, to to work on. So uh, from my personal perspective, I don't know about the coordinator's perspective or even perspective, but from my personal perspective, I, I think it was worth uh, doing the project and presenting uh, the results today. Perfect. So now we end up with the Mentimeter. Also, the recording of this session will be available next week via Eden website and also on the YouTube channel of Eden DLE. Also, please, if you have any questions or any ideas that you would like to share, in this case with Alfredo, uh, please share it via chat and we will be more than happy to answer it. Uh, Alfredo, to close up and uh, before the announcements, um, what are your final thoughts about the Quest projects and the presentations that we have seen today? Oh, you are muted. Sorry, it's a starting point. So we have to work. This is for level six of EQF. Maybe we should think about level seven and um, and prepare or level five also, I, I don't know. We, but we 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 have to work on this, and um, it, it was good to share this uh, with all the participants. We have a large number, about fifty. So thank you very much for your participation. Uh, and um, like uh, Carlos said, this will all be available in the Eden website. Thank you for being here and for collaborating with us, and for listening, of course. Thank you very much. And to wrap up the session, first of all, I want to share with you some Eden announcements, which are very important. I will now share my screen again. Here we can see them. Uh, remember that we have Eden Digital Education Leadership Academy coming to Barcelona, uh, November 29, December 1. If you want to know more about leadership and how your institution can improve regarding this such important matter, do not hesitate to scan this QR code to find more information on, on the Eden DLE website. Also, of course, we have next year's Eden 2024 annual conference. After the success of the 2023 edition in Dublin, we are more than happy to present you with the dates to the 2024 Eden annual conference in Grass, Austria, 16, 18 June. Again, you can find more information on this QR code and more detailed information will be available very soon. So keep your eyes on Eden social media, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Eden website, and keep this link near you because uh, very soon you will have more information about Eden 2024 annual conference. And of course, something that you can do right now is to register to European Digital Education Hub, where we have mentorship and clinics to develop any of your researches knowledge building activities, we'll, we will go with more information about that later on, accelerator, reading corner, and much more. Please join the community of practice, 
Now I will share with you the QR code also to join and present you with some knowledge building activities. Uh, we have a new webinar coming up this Tuesday, November 14 at two o'clock set, how to empower teachers with a critical vision on digital competencies. The moderators will be Teresa Romeo Monseguiter, the speaker Cesar Herrera for Journal Research Center, in CB, Sandra Troya, Ministry of Education in Italy, Carol De Britos from Escola Virolai, Spain too, and Arja Kangasharhu from Lint to Medicine Kouru in Finland. You can use this QR code to register to the November 14 KBA. And also next month, we have another KBA, another webinar on the European Digital Education Hub, which will be evidence-based approaches to technology use in early education. Mark and save the date, December 4 at one o'clock this time. The moderator will be Natalia Kusirkova, University of Estavenger and the Uni Open University. And the speakers, Christian Magnussen, Ministry of Education and Research from Delta Group, Sweden, Sandra Mathers, University of Oxford, Charles Mifsud, Center for Literacy Malta, and Jesper Reitnanen. And these are our Eden announcements. Thank you very much for joining today. Thank you very much for Alfredo to tune in. And thank you, of course, to our presenters, um, Maria Moreira, Daniel Blanc, and Alfredo. And please do not go too far away because we have the final session of European Open Digital Learning Week coming up in just 40 minutes. It will be uh, broadcasted via another Zoom link. So keep your eyes also on your email as Gavia will send you and the Eden Secretary will send you more information. And we will also say thank you to uh, the support IT for these webinars, which is Alba and Carla from Tracy Poon. And please don't forget to join us at one o'clock for design thinking and emerging technologies at the schools across Europe. Reflections on the first year of implementation of Extended 2 project. Again, thank you very much and have a nice day. Bye-bye.